So the way you're going to know that shame is removed, glory will start coming out of you. And that glory ain't going to be for you to say, oh, look at me, look at me. Everything is going to be like, look at him, look at him. <laughs> it's going to be an immediate draw back to the father because that is the fruit. I was walking in the park the other day and I was looking at the, those apples just growing. I kid you not, I never look at the I Every time I look at them apples, I'm like, this tree is very satisfied because these apples are bringing glory to the tree. This tree is not shameful. This tree is okay being in the apple tree. He don't, this tree don't want to be no orange tree. It was made to be an apple tree. And guess what? If that's what I'm made to be. If you are made, so this connects to your purpose. If you can find that thing that God put you here to do, and you say, Jesus, I am going to take this because I know that you're going to, you gave me this in my toolbox or something. You gave me this intelligence for something. You gave me this personality for something. You get, I mean, I look at my life and I'm like, why did God give me all certain tools? They were not for me to build my own name. It was for me to glorify who? So what I need to do, like the guy with the five talents, is go and find a way to multiply this thing. Because the master is coming back soon and he's going to ask for an account on what you did with his stuff. So if I so if Aaron, if let's say God blessed Aaron to uh, to with a certain gift in, in sports or something. God gave him that gift. I mean, as much as me, Thomas and and uh, Jeremy would love that anointing. Uh, <laughs> we <laughs> we probably can't catch no ball like him or duck like him. And guess what? God will. He graced him because he was humble enough to say, listen, well, since you blessed me to be good in basketball, whatever, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play my best. But when people talk to me in the locker room, I'm going to always point them back to him. So that platform was to bring God glory. So he gave him a certain grace for it that he didn't give us. So he gave you a certain grace again that he didn't give me. He gave me a certain grace he didn't give you. And, it, and the proud will say. I want Nathan's grace. I'm going to compete with him. Oh, he can. Oh, he can speak. I can speak better. Now you move into a whole nother spirit and your glory with like this. Now you go start living in shame and everything that you do. God is like, I'm resisting this person because they, they got pride all deep in their heart. I can't even. I yes, I created them. Yes, I love them. But they will be like this branch in John chapter 15. That's going to wither away and die because I don't see no fruit. So as of today, anytime you hear a person say, give God glory, don't jump up and say hallelujah right away. <laughs> Look at your life and say, OK. And it's funny, based on what Jesus is saying, giving God glory is a silent thing. I have never heard fruit talk. Oh, I'm, I'm anointed. Watch that person. <laughs> fruit never say, oh, I'm a fruit. If you're anointed, the other people will tell the fruit you're good. Prideful people will tell you, I'm, I'm an evangelist and I do this. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, thank you, Lord. I want to see you evangel. <laughs> I just made up a word. Go ahead and evangel and let me tell you you're an evangelist. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a minister. Let me see you serve. Fruit don't talk. Fruit just be fruit. And the other people, that apple tree have never told me when I walk past it, hey, you know I'm an apple tree. Hey, 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 you ain't look at me. You ain't look at me. I'm an apple tree. Look at me. Look at my color. Look at my color. I just walked past it and I noticed it. So that tree got brought glory. Because and how, you know, God is going to get glorified is because other people can see the fruit on you. Jesus is like, OK, I see the fruit, that fruit that I, that is being bared from you because you are connected to my vine is going to nourish people. And when you nourish people, you are blessing my heavenly father. So that singing gift you got. That that whatever you got, I'm telling you, God gave you that for a purpose. 
And the devil's job is to make you shameful. So I can tell you right now, you want to look at a person who's dealing with shame. Look at the person who's hiding their fruit. They're going to be very frustrated. <laughs> you know what? I'm a, I have to say this because I can remember going to sleep at night really wanting to take my life because I did not know what I was waking up tomorrow for. There was no purpose. It was like, what am I going to do tomorrow? I had no purpose. It's crazy because now when I close my eyes tonight, I get happy in a couple of ways. I get happy because I'm always thinking, well, if I, if, you know, sometimes I say to my, me and my wife, we'll say to each other, hey, babe, we don't see each other tonight. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. We just don't know. So watch this. If I close my eyes tonight, I'm excited if God takes me. But if I open my eyes in the morning, I'm excited because I get to bear more fruit. Yeah, so there is not a frustration because I'm humble enough to say I need my vine. My vine is it. I cannot. That's why I say it, it. It strikes me how people do not want to. And, and, and I'll say this before we go, that. If a person say they are connecting to the vine. Oh, I'm connected to Jesus and all they do is just listen to the music all day. That's not the connection. And I'm explaining it because the scripture is clear. Let me let me give you this before we go, because I used to try to let my music do the connection until I saw this. Please go to John 15. Music is important. We need to, we need it. It creates an atmosphere, but that's not connecting to the vine. Let me show you what connecting to the vine look like. Look in John chapter 15 again, and I'm going to tell you, show you this. He says in, in verse eight, he says here in, no, or look at verse seven. If ye abide in me and my what? Did he say my songs? So you can't even be considered abiding if there's a disconnected from the word. Lord, have mercy. Put the worship music on. Yes. Create the atmosphere. Pray, talk. But guess what? You got to get into this to connect with the vine. So he's now look at what he says here. He says, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Now you can ask whatever, because, you know, we like to ask, but we don't want to. He says. If you abide in me and my words is in there, then you start asking stuff and it'll happen because you know what you're asking because you you know what's in your manual. <laughs> you, you, you know what's in your menu. You know, I did the teaching about the menu. And, you know, when you go to Burger King and McDonald's stuff, you get you get on there. You like um, I want a Big Mac. I want I want a large fry. And, and you're saying that because you're looking at the, what they offer. So you can ask with confidence. <laughs> but if you don't know the meal, you can't go up and burger and talk about this. I want a ribeye. <laughs> I, they'll be like, what? It has to be clear on what you're asking. And the person who can ask anything is the person who knows this, because now you start to know what not to ask. You see what I'm trying to say? So the abiding is spending time in prayer. Spending time in his word. And the more you do that, the less shameful you're going to feel because now you're going to get excited about your identity. And now you're going to be like, you know what? Now I'm getting this, 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 the, the, the vine in me. Now I'm getting the, the fruits of the spirit is working through me. Now I don't care if people uh, laugh at me because I'm a Jesus disciple. I don't mind that people know that I serve Christ. I only mind that, um, that people uh, don't know that I serve Christ is when I'm not connected to him. So there's a scripture. He says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father in heaven. He says, but if you deny me or ashamed of me, did he say, I still love you? What, what, did, what did he say if, if we are ashamed of him? He was like the same God that everybody talked about God is like he is love. But this is the reason why we're getting it wrong, because we don't understand that. Jesus is like, listen, I, I, I don't want to be with people who's ashamed of me. I need people who's like, listen, I love Jesus. I don't have a problem. You don't like me. Fine. But I love Jesus. He changed my life. So you're looking at a guy here who was on the streets, did all did all this stuff. I did it all. And I am telling you right now, there is nothing. There is nothing to be ashamed of when Christ is your Lord. 
there is a peace you get. You don't have to worry about gunshots flying over your head. And, you know, I just think about my 17, uh, my birthday party when I was 17 years old and how fearful and ashamed I was. I was just so afraid of getting killed that night and all that. And I'm like, you know, ashamed to get at the go on the bus. I'm, I'm, I don't want to be living like that. It's really to the point now where literally if we walked out of here, and I say it all the time, if we walked out of here, there is a piece of me saying I'm ready to see him. And I don't feel like I'm shrinking back. I can't wait to see him. <laughs> so in this series, in next week, we're going to go to the second thing that comes out of the pride door. But in the shame, we want to get to the place where we, uh, we get to the place where, Jesus, I don't have to be ashamed no more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bear fruit. I'm going to connect to the vine because I've tried to do this apart from connecting to the vine. And it just seemed like it has not been fruitful. <laughs> I've been frustrated. And because I've been doing it out of a prideful state and I'm humbling myself and I'm going to say, I need you, Jesus. I can't do this apart from you. 